Taken five with me, Wolf Gorlick. A few minutes riffing on IT and IT security. Today, looking at the password filter DLL. Now, back in the day, right? In the old times, gather around. <laughs> Let me tell you about uh, when we used to ride in wagons and fight bears and run networks on Novell Network. Uh, one of the, uh, the earliest tools I wrote was a Novell Network login prompt. And effectively, it would pop up at random when people were logging in and uh, they would type in the password and it would store that off in clear text and then tell them that the password was typed incorrectly and launch, spawn the real login prompt, which then people would log in, right? It was an interesting way, as an experiment, I didn't distribute this, it was an interesting way to, uh, to demonstrate um, the way to get passwords before they're in a secure directory, before they're encrypted, before everything else happens, right at that login prompt. So the tip for you is this, the modern equivalent to that in a Windows network is writing password filters. So password filter DLL um, is a uh, effectively a snap-in into the login process, right into the, the login process on a Windows uh, computer. So you type in your password, and it will use several different filters to apply policy. This is intriguing if you want to do some cool custom policies. So for example, on the blue team side, you may be aware of Troy Hunt's Have I Been Pwned. You can download a, a module from him that snaps in the password filter and will check the password that they're entering against all the stolen passwords and prevent people from reusing commonly used passwords intriguing little blue team technique. On the red team side, a criminal can use the same process because the uh, login prompt is passing that password in to the password filter DLL in clear text. So the password filter DLL gets the password in clear text ostensibly to perform some sort of filtering on it and see if it adheres to policy. Uh, but criminals can take that clear text and write it off and start storing those passwords because it hasn't been sent to the domain controller yet, hasn't been encrypted, hasn't been hashed, boom, done. So kind of a bad thing <laughs> if, if it happens to our environment. Kind of an interesting thing if you want to play around with it, uh, again, not distributing, but for an experimental purpose, check it out. Now, how do you how do you prevent against this? Well, for one, you make sure that no one can register password filters, and and part of that is um, reducing admin uh, level access on the Windows desktops and Windows Server they're running on. Normal stuff. Another thing is, from a detector perspective, is monitoring when new systems get uh, or new password filters get registered. There's a, a registry key uh, called notification packages that you can go ahead and, and monitor that for change. That's kind of clunky. I don't know that you would want to set up like monitoring for that across thousands of different environments or thousands of different endpoints, um, but you could, you could. Um, it is also something that uh, a lot of different like antivirus packages now will monitor for and, and alert when something happens. Bottom line is just be aware that with all the protections that happen, you know, with a password, we can talk about encryption at rest. We can talk about encryption in motion. We can talk about how it's hashed and hash values are compared. There's a lot that goes on. It's the moment of entry in an authentication system, which is so often the point from the 90s to now that uh, is susceptible to getting clear text password is the point of weakness, right? The moment that the hands touch the keys and the keys hit the buffer and into the login prompt, susceptible. Have you seen anything with uh, password filter, both in terms of blue team or red team, right? Ways to, to leverage this, uh, to protect or lever this to attack? Hit me up in comments or social media. Cheers.